Hey, how's it going, lads and lasses? We got another awesome figure review today. This one's going to be a little bit different. Um, as you can see right here, this is quite obviously Leon from the Resident Evil 2 remake. Though the box will just tell you that it is RPD Officer. And that is because this is not officially licensed by Capcom. Normally, I'm not the kind of person to go for unofficial merchandise of any kind really but i kind of i made an exception here because capcom they do not like to make resident evil figures in at least in the 112 scale so that's going to be your six inch and seven inch figures this is one of the only leon action figures we've ever gotten in this scale and definitely the most articulated one the last time we got one with decent articulation was the palisades one based off of Resident Evil 2, the original. Uh, that was quite a while ago. And then NECA had the Resident Evil license for years. When they first got it though, that was when they were still doing little to no articulation with their figures. They were more, they were like the early McFarland figures. They were like statues more. And then as the line progressed, they added more articulation, but when they were doing Resident Evil 4, they didn't really have very much, so. This is the first one we've gotten in a very long time, and it is very long overdue. Um, I have my theories as to why you don't see a lot of Resident Evil merchandise, at least in this scale. And I'll get into that at the end of this video. For now, let's just get into the actual action figure. And then if you want to stick around for at least my theories on stuff... You're welcome to. So this is by a company called Lim Toys. I'm guessing it's shortened from Limited Toys. They're a Chinese company, obviously. They, you know, like I said, this is unofficial, and they, they have a tendency to do this where they will make figures out of characters that really haven't had figures. Like there's also an Arthur Morgan from Red Dead Redemption Two, though that one's in. Uh, that, that one's in 1.6 scale, and I don't really collect that size. I just barely heard about this. I guess about a year ago is when the pre-orders went up. Maybe even two years ago. And they're just starting to come out now. So, let's take a closer look. It's got some pretty nice detail for an unofficial... I don't want to say bootleg... Because a bootleg would imply that there is an existing mold that they're working off of. This, the only thing I can think of is maybe they took one of the one sixth scale Leon figures and found a way to scale it down, but that's not really how tooling works. But it's got really nice detail. It's all, you know, cloth, fabric, clothing. Um, and underneath that, we have quite a bit of articulation. Though it is somewhat limited, it's still pretty good. So, kind of swivel up and down, in and out. I think there's like a butterfly joint there. Double jointed elbows. There's a little peg in there for the hand that you can rotate it so it can bend to and fro, whichever way you need it to. Um, we've got some torso articulation there in the hips and in the the midsection legs can pivot in and out like that double jointed knees and I th either the the ankles are on a similar joint as the hand or it's some kind of ball joint but it has quite a range of motion there, and the boots are rubber, so it doesn't inhibit the uh, the range of motion too much. So we got some pretty good articulation on this figure, especially, like I said, for one that's using uh, cloth, actual, actual cloth clothing. Where this figure really shines, though, is just the sheer amount of accessories they give you. You get so many weapons, you get key, you actually get key items. Right, we'll start with the weapons. So we've got our weapons here, and we've got quite a few to choose from. 
Let's start out with Leon's most iconic one, the VP70, also known as the Matilda. So this is the standard non-upgraded version. What's cool about all these handguns is that, let me see if I can, all the magazines come out. So that's really cool. That's pretty, that's reminiscent of a lot of the old Palisades ones. I've never really seen that at this scale. Maybe I'm just collecting uh, the wrong figures or uh, maybe some Mezco figures. I haven't really gotten a Mezco 112 figure that, uh, I'm just going to set that aside, that has handguns like that. But I know that the ones that I do have that have guns will have pretty neat little features on them. Okay, here we have the fully upgraded VP70. That's got the extended mag, so that magazine's actually longer than the one that goes with the regular non-upgraded version. We've got the compensator on it. We've got the the, uh, the stock that allows for burst fire. One thing that, I, <laughs> that made me laugh when I played the remake is that it talked about how uh, it's... I, I forget what it said exactly, but it mentioned that it's not a very good gun, and that's... That's pretty close to the truth for the VP70. Um, it's decent on its own. When you get that stock, though, I've heard that it's really hard to control and it's really inaccurate. Anyways, we've also got the Samurai Edge, the infinite model that you get. Uh, well, is it beating the game on normal mode you unlock this one? It's been a while. Anyways, that one also has the removable magazine there. Set that aside. This is one point of of a uh, contention, contemption, I guess, that I had with this was we have the Lightning Hawk here, but we just have the upgraded version with the uh, the compensator and the sight rail. That part doesn't come off, and I wish we would just have a regular Lightning Hawk because. Desert Eagle looks goofy like that, I'm going to say it. But that also has a detachable magazine. Okay, we've got the shotgun. We don't have a... There's an upgraded version. Yeah, we don't. they don't have the upgraded version of the shotgun, unfortunately. But the pump will actually pump. I know that is reminiscent of a lot of Mezco shotguns. I have the Blade Mezco figure, and the shotgun that he comes with has a, an actual functioning pump. Oh, but uh it comes with the the sling and that's actually adjustable so you can adjust the length of it, which is cool. Got fragmentation grenade and a flash grenade. And we actually have a little box of 9mm. We don't have any magnum rounds or or uh 12 gauge shells. But, uh, we got that. So now we have the flamethrower, and the flame effects will actually come off there. To... I just put those on. But that's cool that it comes with that. And that also has a sling. And then, of course, it's, it's not Resident Evil without the rocket launcher. So we got that, and it actually has a missile effect, which comes in and out there. And that, too, has a sling. And that is all of the guns. Alright, here we have the miscellaneous accessories. Uh, these are just kind of bonuses that were pretty cool to get thrown in, though I would have rather gotten more weapons, like like I said, the uh, non-upgraded Lightning Hawk, or the Infinite SMG would have been cool. But we have the typewriter, so it's kind of cool to have a typewriter that actually has a message from Leon to Claire typed in it. It's a little small, but it's it's you can read it. We've got the fox, the raccoon bobblehead, I should say. We have the green herb. Just the green one. We don't have any of the other types. Well, there's the G-Virus sample right there. That is the little container that has the pesticide. Not the pesticide, the... the uh, the chemical that kills all the vegetation in the lab. We have all the precinct keys. Every suit there. And then the security bracelet for the lab. 
It's just the purple. They don't have any of the other colors. The last bit of accessories. These are kind of the uh, the swappable parts for Leon. We have different hands here, and these are like these are rubbery. I I really like that because it makes it easy to put on the guns, especially for the trigger finger. I have the other one on, but here's actually a left hand trigger finger. If you want to dual wield, you can do that. You have two fists there. That one's actually a gripping hand for the knife. And that one is for the shotgun or any of the uh, the two-handed guns. That's an alternate head for Leon there. It's sort of a, an injured head and he's kind of grunting. And then it comes with this adjustable stand here. That actually says Leon Kennedy on it. And this will pop up or down. So that's pretty cool. Now we'll look at some of the accessories that actually fit on Leon himself. When we look back here, we have the little sheath for just the standard knife. They don't it doesn't come with the infinite knife that you unlock for destroying the all the raccoon bobbleheads. But that that comes out it's a little it's a really tight fit, but it does pop out. And this flashlight, that'll come out too, so you can have them holding that. The radio actually comes out. And uh, the this part will, will come off there. Of course, we have the holster. If it'll focus on it. There we go. And that will... It'll fit the... I haven't tried with the... With the, uh... Upgraded VP70. Um... But of course it fits... The regular one. And it will also fit the Samurai Edge. But it just needs a little bit of work. And that is... About everything. You know, it's nice to... To finally get... A good Leon figure. Because like I said, it has been years... Let's actually compare this side by side to a couple of them. That is the Palisades Leon. And here we have NECA's Leon. That one I customized pretty heavily to give it decent articulation. That one stands a little bit taller, but that's because NECA is 7 inch scale, whereas this is a 6 inch scale figure. So that figure stands. Let's get a ruler in here. It'll stand about six and a half, a little bit over six inches tall. So uh, it's, like I said, it has been years, decades even, since we've got a good articulated Leon in this scale. And, you know, my theory for that, and what I kind of base it off of is, uh, when NECA had the license, right towards the end when people were asking, oh, are you going to make more Resident Evil figures? Because the last time they made them was for Operation Raccoon City, and they only made Vector. Randy, the, the guy who deals with the licensing, and he runs the Twitter account, mentioned that uh, it's kind of it's kind of difficult to work with Capcom. There's a language barrier, and, uh, you know, it's just kind of the two companies not really understanding each other. Too well, not not necessarily in language terms every time, but uh, just what what each other wants out of the license, out of the figures. So that kind of explains why American companies aren't typically making Resident Evil merch because it's not just figures where the merch lacks; it, they they lack in even shirts. Barely any Resident Evil shirts come out. Um, I collect enamel pins. They just barely started making enamel pins and I had to order them from a UK website. You know, I'm here in America. And this has been pretty typical with a lot of Capcom's licenses. Devil May Cry has had it almost as bad. They just recently made a uh, a pretty good Dante figure for Devil May Cry 5 that was by a thousand toys. And that one was really good. But it took forever. 
And you know, before that, there was the NECA one, which again took that. They ended up making that because it was like it was like a passion project, you know. And I'm glad they did because that's a really good Dante figure. But the other ones have all been by Play Arts Kai, which is Square Enix's figure company. And those are in kind of a weird, like they're 10 inch scale. They don't line up, obviously, with these figures. They don't line up with the 1 6 figures. So it's a weird scale. So Capcom's just dropped the ball on merch so much. And my theory is that they are just difficult to work with because. Yeah, the language barrier would explain why American companies aren't making this merch, but that doesn't explain why Japanese companies aren't making it. You know, they have some killer Japanese figure companies in Japan, and uh, you'd think one of them would try to make Resident Evil figures, which is a, it's a staple of Japanese video games, I would argue. But uh, you haven't really seen any except... There was a couple from Play Arts Kai, like I said, but those are in the 10-inch scale. You know, we haven't seen any from the likes of, like, Figuarts, Figma, Revoltech, any of them. So it's just... That's just my best guess, is that Capcom... They're probably kind of divas, I would imagine. Just When you see how they just treat their video games, too, especially Resident Evil, because that's their breadwinner... They just do weird things with it. Like, they'll, there'll be long periods where there's not a very good Resident Evil game. And then they'll have, like, a, a hit that all the Resident Evil fans are like, yes, this is what we've been wanting. And then they'll just ride the coattails of that. And they're like, okay, now we have to make our eSports game. We have to make our PvP horror game, our asymmetrical one, because those are really popular. And they just try to ride the, the trends of whatever is in that gaming era. I'm surprised they haven't done a Battle Royale yet. You know, it's like they don't really listen to what the fans are telling them. Like, a, a good example is this is being shot during the year of the 25th anniversary of Resident Evil. For me, it doesn't feel like they're they're celebrating that. It doesn't feel like 25 years of Resident Evil. The only thing that you could argue about that is Resident Evil 8 came out, and it, it didn't really appeal to me. It just... 8 and 7 didn't feel like Resident Evil games for me. I understand that they're good games and people like them, but I, you know, aside from that, that's just a game. Where's a, a collection of the original Resident Evil games, you know? That would be so simple, and everybody's begging for that, because there's no way to really play them on modern consoles unless you emulate them. So that's really my theory, is just Capcom, they're... They don't know what they want to do with their licenses. They're difficult to work with. That's just from what I can observe. So that's why I, long story short, that's why I broke down and I got this figure. Should you decide you also want to get this figure? It's pretty expensive. I got it. It was about $150, which for the quality, I would say is worth it, but it's definitely a steep price. I just shilled out that much because it's Leon. I wouldn't do that for any character that's had a long history of action figures. Just for characters like Leon. Where this may very well be the only action figure in this scale we get for years. If you're going to get it, get it on eBay through an American vendor. I wouldn't get it from a Chinese vendor or any of these. The only other places I saw were these weird, sketchy Chinese sites. And it's, you know, it's it's not, it's nothing against China. It's more so the companies that are producing the bootlegs is is uh, is where my gripes lie, because I I do try to avoid them as much as I can. And uh, if you can find it on eBay for you know around hundred fifty dollars for through an American seller, and you want to go for somebody who has like a ninety, like a ninety nine point seven percent rating. Um, that's like my limit. Any lower than that, um, bootleg stores can kind of fudge the numbers a little bit. They can generate sort of false positive reviews, but, uh, they usually can't get it to go past 99.7 from what I, what I've gathered. And sometimes they'll say they're in America and that's, that's just not actually the case. They're just straight up lying. Um, so that, that's pretty much where I say it's safe, is 99.7.
So that's what you that's what you want to shoot for. That's going to do it for this video, you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all have a good one, and I'll see you guys next time.